Today we're going to build the Achilles expansion pack for the tank skirmish game. This pack contains two sprues which will build up into one plastic Achilles SP anti-tank gun. The pack also contains one Achilles vehicle card, one hero card, two crew cards and two upgrade cards. The plastic sprues for this kit contain all the parts to build either the 3 inch armed M10 tank destroyer, the 17 pounder armed M10C tank destroyer and the M36 Jackson. So now we know what products are available for these tank destroyers, let's look at the kit. So each vehicle comes on two sprues. This one has the upper and lower hull, the 3 inch 17 pounder and 90 mil gun barrels, transmission cover and hull rear. The second sprue has most of the turret components including three mantlets and three different breech mechanisms for the guns as well as the one piece tracks. It also has two types of counterweight, standard and the later duck bill. Detail on the kit parts is strong and crisp. These will look great assembled and painted. There are plenty of optional parts included like armoured covers for the turrets and track grouses to go on the hull side racks. Both the M10 and M36 turrets are present here and there are three mantlets and three breech mechanisms for the different gun variants. The one piece tracks are well detailed and the pieces are keyed so they can't be fitted to the hull incorrectly. The turret counterweight shown on the left here is the later duckbill type for late war, but the kit includes the earlier angled counterweight as well. Let's move on to construction. The first stage is the hull, tracks and suspension. Snip the tracks from the sprue. The tracks and suspension are single pieces with good sharp definition and correct track details for T41 or T51 type tracks which are characterised by smooth rubber blocks. Once the track pieces are free, snip out the hull parts. The hull top will need some careful clean up of the sprue gates around the overhang area on the hull sides. The lower hull piece clearly shows the keying for the suspension to assure it's fitted in the right way around. It would be hard to get this wrong, a nice piece of design. Glue the outside of the lower hull and the upper and lower hull parts fit together. There are posts and holes to guide the alignment of these parts. Next the transmission cover can be glued into place. This is the later one piece cast transmission cover which replaced the original three piece bolted cover. The rear hull piece is next. There is a bit of a sink mark on the engine access door here but this will not be very visible in the completed kit and it would be easy enough to fill and sand this if required. Use the keyed posts and grooves in the hull to align and attach the tracks and suspension pieces to the hull. The final piece of the puzzle here is the hull rear and exhaust baffles. Cut these out and glue them into place on the back of the hull. The large grill engine covers on the back deck and the exhaust gas deflector baffles on this piece indicate this hull is based on the M4A3. Take care and this piece will fit without a gap. So that's the hull completed. There are additional parts like spare track sections, track grouses, spare road wheels and stowage boxes included on the sprues, but this is the main hull assembly complete. Construction now moves on to the turret. Note the detailed gun breech and options for duckbill and standard counterweights here. Snip the main turret pieces off the sprue. Make sure you're cutting these pieces for the M10 turret and not the later M36 Jackson turret. This helpful diagram from the Battlefront website helps you match the correct mantlet and breech for the different guns. In our case we want the red pieces for our M10C 17 pounder. The gun breech piece glues onto the turret floor part. There are specially shaped cradles here to accept the forward parts of the recoil housings on the breech. Then the top of the turret glues on. Be careful here to get the correct alignment and hold the sides for a moment as the glue sets to avoid gaps. I'm using the duckbill turret counterweight so these go on next. There are no guide pins here but the piece fits together ok without them. Just take care with alignment. The M10C uses the 17 pounder gun. This is the one here with the double baffle muzzle brake and counterweight. Fit the gun and the appropriate mantlet together. They're both keyed to ensure correct alignment but the fit isn't tight so hold this for a moment to set. 
I'm not using magnets here, so I'll be fitting the plastic turret peg. This just glues into the hole under the turret. Be careful not to place the turret back onto the hull until the glue here dries. Glue the gun and mantlet onto the front of the hull. There's a groove and post here to aid alignment. Check the angle of the gun and adjust it to your preference before the glue dries. An optional 50 cal machine gun completes the turret assembly. This also completes the build. This is a complete M10C 17 pounder SP anti-tank gun. This is a great kit and was a lot of fun to build. It's the only plastic M10 available in this scale and given it can be built either as the US M10 or M36 as well as a British M10 or M10C it's very versatile. Let's talk about Allied Tank Destroyer Doctrine for a moment. One look at the armor stats here will tell you that these are not tanks. The American name for these vehicles was Gun Motor Carriage. They're a self-propelled mounting for an anti-tank gun. In US service the Tank Destroyer Command was separate from the armored force and in British service these weapons were operated by the Royal Artillery. Drawing on lessons from Blitzkrieg in 1940, tank destroyers were designed to provide mobile anti-tank forces to blunt mass German tank attacks. Tank destroyers mounted heavy guns, often heavier than contemporary tanks, but were open-topped. Less armour protection meant less weight, which made these vehicles more mobile and faster than the tanks they were based on. Lack of armour wasn't meant to be an issue since they were supposed to operate from ambush firing from prepared positions and quickly moving to new firing positions to avoid return fire. In practice, Germans made more use of combined arms forces than mass tank attacks, and tank destroyers could be countered by the armour's supporting elements. While the heavier guns of the tank destroyers helped deal with heavily armoured German tanks, the tank destroyer doctrine fell out of favour after the war. Improvements in tank design meant these vehicles were better able to handle the anti-tank role, without the need for a specialist vehicle. So as you can see, this kit builds into a beautiful model of the Achilles tank destroyer. Let's have a look at the cards. Initiative is 6, middle of the road. You might want to supplement this with upgrades or crew cards, particularly since this vehicle works best from ambush. It's got 6 attack dice with that powerful 17 pounder gun, so it packs a good punch. However, it has an open top and thin armour, so 0 for defence dice. It can't take a lot of damage, with only 3 damage points before it's destroyed. The special rules are cautious and semi-indirect fire. Some cards, including the one I got with my kit, lists coordinated fire here, but this is incorrect. Cautious means that operational Achilles can roll a die after they fire. On a 4, 5 or 6 they make a single move and add one to their speed token. This would be great if you have the initiative advantage, as you can pop out, shoot, and then have a chance to pop back into cover before you can be fired against. Even if you can't make it to cover, an extra speed point makes you harder to hit. However, if you fail the roll, and there's a 50-50 chance you will, you'll be stuck out in view of the enemy. Semi-indirect fire means that stationary vehicles can choose to keep one die result from an attack roll and re-roll the rest. If you have a dismal roll, this is a great rule. It increases the chance of scoring more hits. However, it does mean you are stationary, so you miss out on defence dice. I would try and be in cover when using this rule. So the Achilles is well armed, but lightly armoured. This, along with the cautious rule, makes it good for ambush. And semi-indirect fire means a player can make the most of the big gun. Other cards that come with this kit include Alfie Nichols, a crew card that gives plus one initiative in the shooting phase and plus one attack dice when stationary. Both these attributes would help with using the cautious and semi-indirect fire special rules. Calculating driver means that the player can choose to either gain 2 or lose 4 initiative. This gives the player options to move first to get the jump on an opponent, or move last to see where the opponent moves. Inspired commander gives plus 2 initiative. This can give you the jump on the enemy and again works well with the Achilles special rules. The one foot on the ground card gives plus 1 defence dice when stationary. Using this, crews take a strong defensive position, digging in for the fight. The final card is Bulldog Mascot. It gives a plus one to initiative, and the card can be discarded to cancel out a bailed out, shell-shocked or stunned crew critical effect. So in conclusion, the Achilles builds up into a great looking vehicle. It has a big gun, 
but players will need to use it tactically and use its special rules and upgrades to offset the limited protection of its light armour. Good luck using yours. Thank you.